Hello, my name is Dr. Simon Freilich, consultant in clinical neurophysiology. This video provides an overview of what ulnar neuropathy at the elbow is and what treatments are generally recommended. Of course, whichever treatment you receive needs to be tailored to your need after a full consultation and discussion with your doctor. To understand this syndrome, we'll first need to understand the anatomy of the ulnar nerve. This nerve passes down the back of the arm and across the inner elbow to make its way along the inner forearm. At the level of the elbow, the nerve passes through a narrow canal called the cubital tunnel. If you press the bone on the inner aspect of the elbow, you'll be able to feel the groove along which the nerve runs. If you push hard enough here, it feels uncomfortable if the nerve is irritated. If you've ever banged your elbow and your little finger has gone all tingly, you'll understand why it's called the funny bone. Let's now understand what the ulnar nerve does. The ulnar nerve has a number of important branches. Sensory branches transmit sensation signals from the little finger and half of the ring finger. Motor branches supply most of the small muscles of the hand as well as some of the muscles in the forearm. Okay, so what is ulnar neuropathy at the elbow? This is where the ulnar nerve becomes damaged at the level of the elbow. It can also become damaged at other points like the wrist, but that will be addressed in a future video. There are two main causes of damage that can occur. These are chronic pressure on the nerve and chronic stretch. Let's consider these for a moment. Pressure can be caused by leaning on elbows if you're working at a desk, sitting on a chair with the elbow rests, taking lots of phone calls, sitting in a wheelchair with hard elbow supports, or spending lots of time playing on games consoles or your mobile phone. Stretching of the nerve commonly occurs either with sleeping on your side in a fetal position or engaging in hobbies, work or other activities where frequent bending movements of the elbow are required. Patients often first develop tingling in the fingers, usually those supplied by the ulnar nerve, and so it tends to affect the little and ring fingers. As compression progresses and increasing damage occurs, tingling can develop into numbness. In theory, any numbness should only follow the course of the nerve to the level of the wrist. Otherwise, other causes like lower cervical radiculopathy, where the nerves at the C7 and 8 neck level become pinched, become more probable. If the sensation at the back of the hand is spared, this may be a sign that the level of entrapment is occurring at the wrist level only and not at the elbow. Around the time of persistent numbness, weakness of the hand muscles tends to ensue. Once weakness sets in, it's a sign that the nerve is being badly compressed and the muscles can quite quickly start to waste. The muscles can then become imbalanced and clawing of the little finger can occur. Patients may find their little fingers catching in their pockets as the little finger becomes floppy. The easiest muscle to see this in is in the first dorsal interosseous, or the FDIO. This muscle over here can be seen and appreciated with its muscle bulk in that first web space. As the ulnar neuropathy progresses, this muscle eventually loses its muscle bulk and becomes scalloped and wasted. Elbow fractures can also cause this either acutely or predisposed to this developing even many years later. This is called tardy ulnar nerve palsy. Some conditions cause extra materials to be deposited in the cubital tunnel, such as amyloidosis. Ulnar neuropathy is also quite common in diabetes. So, how do you get diagnosed? For the most part, it's based on clinical information provided by you and signs elicited by your doctor. Whilst ulnar neuropathy at the elbow is very common, there are a number of conditions that can mimic this. The most important one is lower cervical radiculopathy. Here, there is irritation of the nerves in the neck and symptoms extend beyond the wrist into the inner forearm. Ulnar neuropathy at the elbow is commonly confused with various musculoskeletal issues in the elbow, even within the medical community. Tennis elbow and golfer's elbow are common inflammatory conditions of the muscle tendons where they insert onto the bones of the elbow and termed epicondylitis. Both can cause radiating pain, but they shouldn't cause numbness in the fingers. 
tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis occurs on the outer aspect of the elbow and causes local pain, especially when extending the wrist. Golfer's elbow or medial epicondylitis occurs on the inner aspect of the elbow and causes local pain, especially when flexing the wrist. Now there are a variety of special tests to check for ulnar neuropathy at the elbow. If you haven't yet been diagnosed with ulnar neuropathy at the elbow, I'm going to show you two simple tests to help guide you. The first thing I'd like you to check out is a strength in the muscle called the ADM. This muscle opens the little finger outwards. So try pushing on this finger. If you can overcome this, this is a sign of ulnar nerve weakness. The next muscle I'd like you to check is called the FPL or flexor pollicis longus. It pulls the thumb down like so. Try pulling up the thumb in from that flex position. If you can't, and that's strong, and you have weakness of this little finger muscle over here, then you likely have ulnar neuropathy. Personally, I prefer to use nerve conduction tests and EMG to diagnose ulnar neuropathy. These are the most reliable investigations and are better than any other clinical tests. They can diagnose very accurately how bad the ulnar neuropathy is and what treatments are likely to be the most helpful. They can also help decide if your symptoms are due to any of the other related conditions. If you're considering surgery, I would always recommend that you have these beforehand. It's really important to identify potential sources of the entrapment, as this allows the irritative cause to be treated. There are only really two types of treatment. Conservative treatment, which are reserved for mild to moderate ulnar neuropathy, and are said to be between 80-90% effective. These can consist of either, or a combination, of elbow splinting for three months, mainly nocturnal use, and then reassessed, or physiotherapy, where nerve gliding exercises are taught. If these work, great. And if not, one might need to have a more interventional approach with surgery. Surgical success rates are quoted to be around 75 to 80%. And the nerves are either simply released from the cubital tunnel, i.e. decompressed, or it can be moved, i.e. transposed from the back of the elbow to the front of the elbow. While surgery can be used at any grade, because ulnar neuropathy can resolve by using the more conservative treatments, we tend to reserve the use of surgery for the more moderate stage and onwards. I hope that this video has helped explain ulnar neuropathy and the different treatment options available. The single take home message I would like to impart is that the sooner ulnar neuropathy is treated, the better the outcome. Once the muscles have become wasted, nerve and muscle regeneration is less assured. If you have commenced a course of treatment and it hasn't significantly helped over a 12 week period, please get the situation reassessed with your doctor. If there are any doubts about the diagnosis or its response to treatment, have yourself referred to your local neurophysiology lab who will be pleased to assess further.